So you have this soccer tryout coming up and you want to make sure you do everything you can to ensure that you make the team. In this video, we are going over how to stand out at a soccer tryout. Hey, what's up guys? Dave here from Simply Soccer, where we help you to improve your game and stand out on the pitch. And on this channel, we release daily soccer tips, technique, and training videos. So if you haven't already, make sure you hit subscribe and also hit that bell icon so you're notified whenever we upload videos or do live streams. Let's face it, there are sometimes 50, 60, or up to 100 players at tryouts all trying to get the attention of the coaches there. This means it can be very, very difficult to stand out even if you're one of the best players in the group. You can end up having a bad game, doing something the coaches don't like, or you know a number of different things that don't allow you to be picked. Well in this video I'm just going to give you some ideas that can help put the odds in your favor. Because when it comes to a trial, it's not always the best player that gets picked, which is the unfortunate case. Now the coaches want to pick the best players, but if you're not showing them that you are the best, if you're not standing out, if you're not making yourself noticeable, then it's going to be very difficult. So let's go over some tips on how you can get on the coach's radar and how you can impress them during tryouts. Now first and foremost is you do need to make sure you are prepared for your tryouts. I'm not going to spend too much time on this because this is pretty self-explanatory and something you should already know, but if you go into a tryout unfit, if you go into a tryout not prepared, you haven't worked on your game, um, it's going to show when you're there. If you can only run for 10 minutes before your body seizes up and you're getting cramps or something like that, then you're not going to make it. So if you have a trial coming up in a month, two months, three months, even a few weeks, do everything you can to make sure you're in shape and that you're preparing for the tryout. It's no good having a tryout three days from now and going, oh crap, I'm not in shape, time to get in shape, because that's not enough time to prepare. Just as a little side note there, coaches will be able to tell if you're not in shape and they're not going to want players on their team that don't have the discipline in order to get themselves in shape in time for the tryout. Now this can be a little different if you're coming off an injury or something like that, and in that case, just try your best to get yourself in shape before the tryout comes up. Okay, second piece of advice is you need to remain calm. Trials can usually be very frantic and full of a lot of nervous players. Be someone who is calm amongst the storm here. If you are a calm player, you're level-headed, you're confident, and you're not getting worked up, it's going to show as you're playing on the pitch. Do some exercises before the match to calm your mind. Do some meditation if you do that or visualization to get yourself in the right mindset and the right frame of mind because it can make a world of difference at your tryout. Again, like I said, there are going to be many players there that are nervous, that are going to feel the pressure of having to perform in order to impress the coaches. If you can remain calm and keep a level head, it's going to be to your advantage. Okay, next is you need to play to your strengths. I mean, this should again should be something that's self-explanatory, but you should not be trying, you know, to show off or do anything fancy. Play to your strengths. If you're not a player who usually beats players one-on-one, -on -one, now is not the time to start doing that. And if you are a player who does beat players one-on-one -on -one most of the time, now is not the time to stop doing that. Play to your strengths. So if you're good at running at players and beating them, you need to demonstrate that to the coaches. If you're good at maintaining possession and not losing the ball, you need to demonstrate that. You know, the coaches are going to be looking for different types of players. And if you're trying to play to something that's not your strengths and the coaches see that, they're just going to assume that, okay, that's what he usually does and he's not doing it that well. So you don't want to do that. Play to your strengths and show the coaches what you can do. And as a little side note, make sure you play your position. When they're selecting positions to do in the tryout, tell them your position really quickly. You know, be nice and polite about it, but stand firm that that is your position. Don't argue about it. If they do end up putting you in another position, don't complain, but try and get your position and stand firm with it. Because some players, you know, will just kind of be wishy-washy, be like, yeah, I kind of play here, here, and here. If you're a striker, go, I play striker. Say that's your position um, and be firm about it because we want to be playing to your strengths. It's no good if you're a striker and they put you in center mid because those are two completely different positions. So try and get your position in the scrimmage that's going to happen to showcase your talents and play to your strengths. Again, this is not the time to be doing new things that you don't usually do. Okay, next one is you need to work 
hard. Usually tryouts are one or two days and usually they're just scrimmages where they'll split the players into small teams or two large teams and have you play each other. Work your ass off. Bust a lung. I mean, you get one shot at this. Tryouts are held usually once, maybe twice a year, depending if a team has two seasons or one. So, you know, leave everything on the field. Don't be the player who was lazy in their trial and regrets it later because they didn't work hard. And there's two reasons for this. If you work hard, you can do more. You'll get the ball more. You can showcase more of what you can do. And two, coaches will pick up on whether you're a hardworking player or not a hardworking player. And there's no coach that I know who likes lazy players. I'm going to tell you that right now. There's no coach I know who likes players like that. They all want players who are hardworking. They want talented and skillful players as well, but I guarantee you most coaches will take a not as talented, not as skilled hard worker over a more skilled lazy player. So make sure you're working hard. By the end of it, you should be tired. Make sure you are. Make sure you're chasing the ball down. Make sure you're making the runs. You know, make sure you are tiring yourself out to the point where at the end you are tired. Because if you're not working hard, coaches, even if you're a good player, may look at you and go, well, you know what, we're gonna take the hard working player over this guy, even though he's more skillful. Next, and this is actually a more important one than uh, players realize because it's very important to make an impression on the coaches. And one way to do that is communicate with your temporary teammates and be a leader. Uh, most of the times, and I've fallen into this as well when I find myself at a trial with other players, it's because not really anyone knows each other, they're very reluctant to communicate with each other. No one steps up and, and, be, and becomes a leader. But this is where you can step in and really get on the radar of the coaches by being the person who's vocal by being the person who's encouraging his teammates, by being the person who's being the leader. And I'm sure you've experienced this if you've been to tryouts where there aren't too many players who are being, who are communicating. You know, if someone's on one of your teammates and they're about to get the ball, tell them, man on. If they can turn, tell them to turn. If someone needs to get back to position, get, you know, direct them back to position. Be the leader and you will get on the radar of coaches. Coaches love leaders. The more leaders in their team, the better. So this is one simple thing you can do in order to get Get the attention of the coaches. Now don't be looking at the coaches during the trial or anything, ignore them, but definitely be a leader and this, they will notice this. They will notice if you are communicating, especially since most players are not. You will st literally stand out just from this one thing and then you just need to make sure you play well as well. Okay, and final tip I'm going to uh, tell you is take risks, especially if you're an attacking player. Now, you defensive players probably should not be taking risks. If you're a defensive player, make sure you're just solid at the back, you're doing your job well, and you're demonstrating that you are a very good defender. But if you're an attacking player, you need to be shooting. You need to be taking players on. You need to be taking risks. Because if you're like a striker or a winger and you're not taking shots and you're not trying to score goals and you're not being direct at times, I mean, then what? why would they put you on their team? They're going to want players players who can do stuff for them that can be dangerous. Again, play to your strengths, but take some risks. You have one or two days to show what you can do to these coaches. Don't be a ball hog. Don't try and show off. That's not what we're trying to do. Be effective. But again, think of a trial as you advertising yourself to the coaches, but you only have a certain amount of time. You have like an hour or two to do it. That means you really need to make sure you're doing things that are going to help you, you know, stand out from the rest of the players there. So beating players one-on-one -on -one, if you can do it. Score goals and taking shots, showing that you're not shy to shoot the ball. Trust me, coaches will not mind that unless you're being really silly about it, like taking 40-yard shots or shooting when the teammate's in a better position. But if you're 18 yards from goal and you have an opening, take that shot. If you have a person isolated one-on-one -on, -one on the wing, take them on. You know, you need to take the risks and show coaches that you're not afraid of attacking people, of being direct, of making things happen. And trust me, I've been a part of many tryouts where players are so nervous that they'll do one of two things. They'll just get it and pass even when they have an opportunity to take a risk, or they'll take too many risks and try and dribble through four people. Both are the wrong thing to do. You need that balance. You know, you need to play smart, but you need to recognize when you need to take risks. All right, guys, so those are just a few tips to keep in mind for your next tryout. Try and make sure you incorporate all of these in there. Make sure you're preparing for your tryout and just doing everything you can to stand out. Again, there are some things on here like the um, communication thing that most players don't do. 
And if you're doing something that most players are not doing and it's a positive thing, it's going to automatically put you at the head of the list of potential people they're going to want to bring on. This isn't guaranteeing they'll bring you on because of this, but again, it's these little things that can really help you to stand out. And once again, it's not always the most skillful or best player that makes it. It's the player that shows themselves the most and shows up to the tryout the most or the best during that tryout phase. Remember, you only have like a day or two or a few sessions to impress the coaches. You have to do as much as you can in that limited time frame that you have. All right, guys, so the question of the day is, when do you have a tryout coming up? Let me know in the comments. And also tell me which one of these do you need to work on the most? Do you need to make sure you're communicating? Do you need to do some more preparation? Let me know all of that down in the comments. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. We do have other tryout videos that I made a long time ago and you can check those out if you want they go over some similar stuff to this one but there's some other stuff in them as well so you can check them out by checking out the links in the description make sure you share this video with teammates and friends um, so that they can get prepared for their tryouts also subscribe if you're new and like this video as well i'm gonna have two videos come across the screen now that you can check out to help yourself even more to become a better soccer player. And remember to come back at 5 p.m. tomorrow for a brand new video. This is Simply Soccer, where we're helping you to improve your game and stand out on the pitch. Thank you guys so much for watching, and good luck at your tryout.